welcome to Peanut Workshop. Today we are going to be putting together a wire harness to test the DRV230BD, the motor controllers that we developed. What we're going to do is we're going to use a wire harness I found on Amazon that's meant for kids' cars. And I'm going to kind of scavenge what I can from it. I'm going to cut these motor connectors off. I'm going to cut the charging and power connection off and then I'm going to hope that the high speed low speed switch and then forward reverse switch will plug right into a stock power wheels gear selector and I can use that for forward reverse high low. Um, that doesn't work I'll just use these switches. It should work it should be wired the same I should be able to just plug it right in and then there is an on off toggle switch and there is a foot pedal. So I'm going to work on getting this wired up. When I'm done, I'm going to show you how to plug it in and that'll serve as a demonstration and how to wire one of these up on a bench where it's a lot easier to see where wires are going. I have two load banks. These are 10, 10 ohm resistors wired up in parallel. So it's equivalent to one ohm total and they're 100 watts each. Each of these load banks can easily handle the roughly 700, 600, 700 watts we're going to be putting into it. We're going to be using this 24 volt 60 amp power supply. So we're going to be drawing about 24 amps at 24 volts through each of these load banks. Oh, roughly 48 amps total. It'll be a little less. It'll be about 46 amps per 46 amps total. We'll get about 23 amps because of voltage loss and everything. And I also have two motors just to demonstrate the test rather than a, a load bank with no real visuals. I have two, two throttle pedals. So these are the way these are going to come from me. They come with a connector on it. I buy these from you know, a supplier that's meant to go with those scooter controllers. So you just when you receive it, you're going to have to cut these off and strip the wires just like this. I've already done this one. When you're stripping this sheathing, you just be careful not to nick any of these smaller wires inside of it if you have to cut it back at all. I usually cut it back a bit so I have a bit of room to work with. And I'll show you how to wire up two pedals if you're going to be using two pedals. All right, let's get started. And uh, oh, I also have ferrule crimpers and ferrules. These aren't necessary typically. I'm going to be using this harness for testing every unit that gets shipped out. So I want it, I need the ends to be reliable. So I'm going to be putting ferrules. Ferrules are just a little barrel that you crimp around the wire. It's going to make for a much more reliable interface when you're taking it in and out constantly. All right. I'll be back to show you the final result and how to wire it up. Okay, we should be ready to plug everything in and test it. For now, I'm gonna leave the original forward reverse selector on just to get things right, and then I'll swap that over once I know everything's working. So first thing, I'm gonna put this jumper in. Um, when you receive it, it'll have a jumper in already. So this is the enable jumper that's going to provide power to the logic circuit. This is where you could put a on off switch. I recommend you do. There we go. All right, next I'm going to wire up these pedals. So I have some three position WAGO connectors. These are the smaller gauge ones. And I'm just going to put, this is just going to make things a lot easier for me swapping things in and out. I have ferrules on the data lines from the pedals. So one's going to be the gas, one's going to be the brake. I didn't put ferrules on the 3.3 and the common. I'm just going to leave those because those are going to stay in the Wago connector. Mm -hmm. 
12 volt power. So this is the normal power into the vehicle. So this would have been the battery connection if you had a normal power wheels ride on type vehicle. And then this is the 12 volt return. Now, if you are running a vehicle with 12 volt accessories you wanna keep, try and run this 12 volt return into the main connector. We don't. And now the motor connections. These all need ferrules as well. Have to strip these back further. I'll be back. On. Now, this is the part where this can get annoying. You gotta keep these two motors. So one is left, one is right. I do not know which is which. Uh, so I do not know which position to put these in. There's eight possible configurations. Some of those are gonna work, some are not. So this is going to be kind of a trial and error. I did leave these connectors on. Don't really know why. So all I'm gonna do is plug the first pair in. And then I'm gonna plug in the second pair. And then we'll plug it into the power supply and see if it works. All right, so just to recap what we have here, we do have stock like throttle pedal with plunger switch. We have forward, reverse, high, low, on off switch of some kind, plugged in with power, the motors, motor outputs coming in as inputs. And then we have jumper wire, 3.3, are common and then our two data lines for two pedals. Now we're gonna plug in our power supply. Remember this does not have reverse polarity protection. So double check your polarities before powering anything on. We have power. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, connect here. All right, so I have 24.08 volts in. This power supply usually puts out just about 24.0 something. So that seems right. We're gonna check to see if we have, that one did nothing. There we go, we do have a throttle pedal. So that's good, brake is disabled. We're gonna go ahead, enable brake, submit, okay. And now we have brake pedal. So brake and throttle are working, voltage is working. We're gonna push this power button over here. I gave us power, push this pedal. We got nothing. So something's wired up wrong or backwards probably. I'm gonna try and prop this up. Okay, that gave forward high. I see. There's a park. So that's drive, that gives us reverse. This is a park position that gives us neutral. And this is reverse and that's giving us forward high. And this is in high speed, so we switched that to low. We got forward low. So what this means, most likely, all we have to do is swap left and right motor and everything should work. Okay, it says we have voltage. There we go, we have a throttle and brake. Push the um, stock pedal and it switches to reverse. Neutral, forward low, forward high, and reverse, so we have everything. So that's all it took was swapping these two wires one time and we have our direction you push this pedal and you're going to it's going to pick up a direction and automatically go if you had the throttle pedal disabled right now the throttle pedal is enabled so that's not going to happen so i can throw two motors in and show a function All right, gotta push this there we go both motors are going 
to be able to switch direction here. And both motors go. Now we're going to disable that pedal. I'll go and we'll just disable brake and throttle. All right, do remember when connecting to Wi-Fi, there are some radiated immunity and radiated emissions issues between the Wi-Fi antenna and the sensitive motor controller chips. So, so okay. So I push this, these should go full speed. And brake. Now these are 12 volt motors. I'm running them out of a 24 volt supply, so. Just gonna pop tap it a little bit so it doesn't arc too much. So there we go. That is the basic install. If you want a throttle, if you want a brake, if you want neither, this is how you do it. One more thing before I want to test this out. See if this works. Oh, I don't know which configuration here is going to be right. You know, which, which orientation. So I'm going to try them all and see if I can get one working. Hopefully without shorting something. go back enable throttle pedal here so reverse forward low reverse reverse let's just try simple swapping these two see if that gets us it Reverse, forward high, forward low. Well, that's strange. Let's flip these over. Reverse, 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 forward low. around screen timed out there we go forward high forward low and reverse perfect all right thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something about the motor controller or at least were entertained thanks I forgot to show you guys the actual test that I'll be doing during for production purposes. So bear with me while I get this plugged in. I'm back up. I have throttle pedal engaged, enabled. I'm going to turn this power button on. I'm in reverse. Let's just go to forward high. Forward high. And I'm going to do the throttle pedal. That's 100% throttle. I have a 2 amp current limit set at the moment. Let me fix that. Do, do, do. So there's a new feature that I haven't showed or posted yet. There's a detect motor stall condition. There's enable disable for that. What that's going to do is that's going to have a timer to allow you to exceed the current limit. So it's currently set to five. That's the default. And then a delay to hold motors in brake mode. So basically after you exceed five seconds of current limiting and it's limited down under 50% of the max max limit. So once it's it's limited itself down from 100 down to 
for five seconds, it's going to hold the motors in a brake condition for four seconds. It's gonna do coast for a second that you can't change, and then it's going to do brake for four seconds. It's gonna hold the motor stopped, and then it's gonna allow them to restart. That's gonna give them a couple seconds to cool down in the event that they had stalled. So the hopefully, and I've tested it, and that's what it's doing. It's to protect the motors and the grave digger. Okay, change the current to 30. Okay, let's try that again. I need to put a toggle switch in for this. I'm gonna do that, you know, for testing purposes, but got forward high. So there we go, we got 22 and 21 amps. Motor A is reading 22, motor B is reading 22 now. Um, putting out 540 watts each roughly. So that seems to be working out just fine. Our input voltage is dropping from 24 to 23.8. That's reasonable. And our runtime counter is going. So everything here seems to be working just fine. And that's all that I'm gonna be doing for production. Basically testing, make sure I get the right current reading. It's in the right range. Remember that current measurement is is really most accurate at 100% duty cycle with a resistive load. Once you're putting an inductive load on it, it's really difficult to get an accurate reading with current, especially when you're sending a PWM signal. So when using that, that current measurement for, for diagnostic purposes, you keep that in mind. It, it, it's going to give you, it, it could be off by quite a bit, just, just the nature of measuring current on a switching inductor. So yeah, I give everything here seems to be working fine. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and please subscribe for future content.